This video will cover the conversion of an antique Massey Harris tractor to fully electric, built for actual use on the solar roller property. Hey there, Brett with Solar Rolla. Here we are with a, a 40s Massey Harris tractor. So this was my dad's tractor. I remember standing next to him right there as he made hay and cut hay and baled hay in upper Minnesota. So this was one of the few things that we were able to get out of the garage that fell at my dad's place. So um, the steering wheel got a little bent and there is some components that are bent but for the most part it's all here. Um, the motor is frozen up on this so of course right away I thought hey could we put an electric motor in this and what would that be like? Well, I think it would be amazing. Um, I think you could run your hydraulics with a nice quiet electric motor all day long. Um, this is a 30 horse gas motor so we'll be probably putting a minimum 100 horse electric motor in it which is going to make the whole tractor a little more powerful. I found a Massey Harris tractor just like this on Facebook Marketplace and it had the wide front end. So the wide front end would be nice. This has a crop row front, so it can be a little tippy. But uh, it's a pretty short wheelbase, and we got quite a bit of width in the rear there, so it'll be all right. The funny thing was the wide front um, tractor was $500. It had a running motor. It had hydraulics that worked. So that's kind of what I'm up against with this tractor. I could basically buy a 10 times better tractor for $500. <laughs> so this is truly going to be a labor of love and just a way to preserve something that was always kind of special to me. I think your dad and a tractor are always something that kind of go hand in hand and are special. So we're going to try as we can to kind of preserve the look of this thing. So keep the red rusty metal going. Fortunately the motor I have for this thing is red and rusty so it's a big brush DC motor which I think will fit perfectly. We'll run the existing hydraulic pump with it. We will have to get a couple of hydraulics in here and we'll want to put a couple on the bucket. But yeah, we're just getting started with this now and we're going to start tearing it down. We're going to get the motor out and start really measuring and seeing how to mount the electric motor, what would be the easiest way to do it. Stay tuned. So yeah, we're just going to WD-40 some of these, what, 80-year-old nuts and bolts to try to get some of this stuff off. We have Hobie over here, hello, our good man who's here at the Solarola acreage, um, interning, I guess you could call it, meditating with me and converting vehicles. He's buffing on the wind power tower. We're going to paint that up and move forward on that today. So yeah, Hobie's excited to see a full conversion electric conversion to solar powered electric um, starting with this tractor.
So it's been a long day working on red foods today, and one of my favorite things um, to do for a little break is work on another EV. <laughs> um, so this tractor, I'm really excited to convert. We need a little help around the farm here, um, instead of doing everything by hand. I have to adapt now this flywheel that came off that engine to that bell housing where the old motor sat. So this is a four and a half inch hole here. Actually, what we're looking at is here. So that hub is four and a half inch. The hub on our motor is four inch. I thought we were going to get lucky there for a minute, but we didn't. However, it is also a six, six bolt pattern. So I can get the other bolts, which is a little, little shallower pattern, right in there. So then it's just a matter of getting my spacing in and out so that it fits a pilot shaft coming out of the transmission. So here's our four inch coupler that is on this Hyper 9 here. I'm sorry, it's not a Hyper 9, it's a Warp 9. What am I, doing? What am I thinking? Um, and like I said, on that tractor we have a four and a half inch hub coming out of the motor. So we're going to need to spin out a little adapter that will bolt onto this and provide us with some um, with that four and a half inch hub. That will also space us back a little bit, which, which we need to handle that pilot shaft that needs to go into there. We're also going to need to put a little bushing, like a 5 ace bushing in there to hold that pilot shaft. But it looks like we've got plenty of room in there, so that's good. Pretty excited about this project. Like I said, it's been in the making for a lot of years and it is a dirty job, but it's a perfect motor for the job of Warp 9. We'll run it at about 150 volts. We might actually at some point sprocket down should we decide to go with a, a four-wheel drive front end for this. I want to keep it kind of in the, in the shape of an old Massey Harris. You know, the motor that I found for it is red. It's not exactly the same color red, but pretty close. And I'm going to put the battery kind of up above, underneath some of the shrouding. And I'd like to keep it kind of somewhat original. It's a cool old tractor. So hopefully this will give back as much as we put into it and more. So it couples up like any electric vehicle. Um, you simply mount the flywheel flex plate um, to a coupler on the electric motor shaft. Um, this electric motor already had a coupler on it that was pressed on. It looked like a lot of work to get it off. It was pretty close to what I wanted. So all I had to do is make kind of an adapter spacer to get my clutch spacing right. And then it um, went into the bell housing there just like pretty much any electric motor that's replacing a gas motor. So a small aluminum coupling was all it took. As simple as that sounds, it was a significant amount of machining and of course holding tight tolerances so that when you start spinning the clutch it doesn't vibrate and doesn't, you know, cause unnecessary stress that could break something. So it's really nice to have a lathe for this type of project or have a good friend that owes you favors that has a lathe and and get some of this stuff trued up really um, accurately so that it performs well. I'm gonna put the battery and the controller up so that when you put the shroud on you don't see them so they're hidden so all you see is this like lonely little motor down here and I'm gonna try to even hide the wires and stuff so it looks so it, it kinda re maintains its 50s you know tractor look so I'm making some brackets here to hold some angle that's going across there to hold the battery and the controller. So I think I got room for the, it's going to be tight, the controller might have to go down here.
electric tractor. Quiet, powerful, um, no stank, just all around fun. Let's take it for a cruise. So what we have right here is we got a 48 volt battery. So we're just running this on 48 volts. We'll probably peak out at about 25 kilowatts. So right around uh, four or 500 amps peak, about 200 continuous, which is gonna be about 15 horse. So this is plenty. This will get me snow plowing. This will get me pulling logs. This will get Kira running hydraulics in her garden. So pretty excited. Let's go, shall we? Yeah, baby. Woo! Electric tractor! Always wanted to do this! Take a, take a good look because we're going to put the cover on and you won't even see the battery or the controller. Just the nice red net gauge motor. Warp 9. This is a Massey Harris Warp 9, ladies and gentlemen. Solarola. Brett's dad always wanted a wide front for this tractor for obvious safety reasons. So Brett searched high and low and finally found one, creating a full circle moment on this build. 